Hello and Namaste. In continuation with the non-linear programming problems, we have already done with the Lagrange's multiplier method problems for one equality constraint. Now, according to the demand of the learners, uh, we'll be going ahead with the uh, so solving the question of self-observation slide. Now, under this self-observation slide in that particular, please reach to the particular session first before going ahead with this. So, this would be a second question. You would be going ahead with the one equality constraint. Now, in this particular session, we'll be going ahead with this particular first question. And the second question would be again for your self-observation slide. So, this is considered the second question for your self-assessment that how much you have understood after listening to this two different videos. First, which already we have done it. And this is the second which we are going ahead with the self-observation slide. We'll be dealing with the first question in the today's session. Now, this is uh, the theory part which we have already discussed in the previous one. The For one equality constraint, Lagrange's multiplier method, this is what we have already discussed on. Let me take you to the question. Use the method of Lagrange's multiplier to solve the following NLP problem. Does the solution maximize or minimize the objective function? Maximize z equals to 12x1 plus 8x2 plus 6x3 minus x1 square minus x2 square minus x3 square minus 23 subject to x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equals to 10 and the non-negativity is x1 comma x2 comma x3 is greater than equals to 0 and this is what is the answer I have already kept it in front of your eyes so that we, we know that this is what is the answer we need to reach for. Okay, now in this particular Lagrangian method, the same method which we have already done it. So, uh, we are defining the Lagrangian multiplier that is L x comma lambda which is equals to f of x minus lambda times g of x. What is this g of x is nothing but the constraint. So, this is the function g and this is the function which is the maximization or you can say the uh, optimization function that is nothing but the function f. So, we have we have taken out f of x minus lambda times g of x. We have defined this as lambda which is known as a Lagrangian multiplier. So, 12x1. So, this is what is the part of f of x minus lambda times this is the part of the g of x which is nothing but the constraint. This is what l we have written. Now, after writing the L, as per the procedure we have already discussed, that that is the reason I have kept this particular uh, slide over here for you all, so that you can just refer this slide for. So, what we needed, so we need to have, have, have do L upon do x1, do L upon do x2, do L upon uh, lambda. So, whatever the number of variables, we have to differentiate L with respect to those variables and equate it with the 0. Similarly, do L upon do lambda is equal to 0. So, we are doing the same thing again here. So, if you observe here, dou L upon dou X1, we have got X1, X2, X3. These are the three different variables. So, dou L upon dou X1 is 12 minus 2 X1 minus lambda is equals to 0. So, if you observe here, the X1, we have this X1. Let me just do it here. We have the X1 term over here. We have the X1 term over here and we have the X1 term here. So, differentiating only these three terms, keeping all other terms as constant because we are differentiating partially L with respect to X1. So, it's 12 minus 2x1 minus lambda equals to 0. If we'll do it, we'll be getting it as 12 minus 2x1 minus lambda equals to 0. That is, x1 we are defining in terms of lambda. Similarly, for the second, that is L with respect to x2, that is, this is what we are going to get it. So, now if you'll observe here, we have got the terms which are there with respect to x2 are present here. So, considering this minus lambda also, so we'll be having this as do L upon do x2 is equals to this 8 minus 2 x2 minus lambda equals to 0. That is x2 is equals to 8 minus lambda by 2. Again expressing x2 in terms of lambda. Similarly, do L upon do x3 is 6 minus 2 x1. So, just a minute. Let me just. These are the terms which considered or which are having x3 as a term. So, which is 6 minus 2 x3 minus lambda equals to 0. Again, the same thing. Do L upon do x3 is equals to 0. So, that means x3 is equals to 6 minus lambda by 2. Now, differentiating L with respect to lambda, that is nothing but, which is nothing but, we are just getting with respect to lambda means we are getting this particular bracket with the negative sign. So, minus of x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus 10 is equals to 0. That means we are nothing but, we are getting the constraint that is this g function. That is x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals to 10. Now, in this particular, whenever we are different, we are, we are saying that this is dou L upon dou lambda is equals to 0. That means this is equals to 0. That means we are getting x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equals to 10. Taking the values of x1, x2 
and x3 from these equations we will be getting the value in terms of lambda and that gives us the value of lambda equals to 2. So we have got the value of lambda equals to 2 and if we'll get the value of lambda equals to 2 we can easily get and reach to the values of x1, x2, x3. Let me just do that in the next slide. So putting these values of x1, x2, x3 in the last equation dou L upon dou lambda equals to 0 and solving them we have already got this lambda equals to 2. Now taking this lambda, uh, the value of lambda equals to 2, we will be getting the extreme points as, so x1 is equal to 12 minus lambda by 2, that is 12 minus 2 by 2, x1 is equal to 5, x2 is 8 minus lambda by 2, 8 minus 2 by 2, that is x2 is 3, then x3 is 6 minus lambda by 2, 6 minus 2 by 2, that is x3 is equal to 2. So we have got the point over here as x0, x1, x2, x3 as x0, 5, 3, 2. That means to prove the sufficient condition of whether the extreme point solution is, gives maximum or minimum value of this particular objective function, we need to evaluate n minus 1 principal minus as follows. So that means n minus 1 we have got is here n is 3, 3 minus 1 that is we have to find out two number of principal minus which are which are coming out to be delta 3 and delta 4 as we have got it here three different variables okay now therefore this is what is the objective function we have given and this is the constraint based on that we have written here the capital l or the lagrangian function and delta 4 is this particular matrix we have already uh, seen it in the uh, delta 4 that is 0 g of x1 g x2 g x3 and so on taking this value so now let me just be concentrate on this first so g x1 that is this is the g x1 means we have to differentiate g with respect to x1 and we, we are having only one term over here with x1 and that is of 1 so differentiation of this g with respect to x1 will give us this one similarly with x2 this and this is with with respect to x2 and if you observe here gx1 gx2 gx3 same are over here so if you observe here just a minute so if you observe here these are these values are same as what we have got it at the first column and the first row that is the reason 0 1 1 0 1 1 1 over here we have got it now let me just explain you how to do it quickly. Let's find out this. Now, let me just do that here. Let uh, L x1 square. That means differentiating L with respect to x1 twice. So, now if you observe here. So, if you take it L x1 which will be giving us this term and this term and this term. So, that is we are getting 12 minus 2 x1 minus lambda. This is the first time we have differentiating L with respect to x1. If we we'll differentiate L with respect to x1 again that is x1 square. So we are having only one term of x1 that is of minus 2 and that is what we got it over here. That is what we got it over here and that is the reason that Lx1 square will be getting it as minus 2. Similarly Lx2 square Lx3 square will be getting as minus 2 and minus 2 the same way what we have applied over here. Now let me just do it again over here the, the, the other terms over here just a minute or if you observe this is all about the diagonal elements of this particular uh, matrix now if you concentrate on this x1 x2 so uh, the l with respect to x1 and x2 but if you observe here l with respect to x1 if you do it l with respect to x1 that is what we got it as 12 minus 2 times x1 minus lambda now if you we'll go on uh, uh, we will try to differentiate l with respect to x2 now we do not have any x2 term over here. So 12 minus 2 x1 minus lambda we do not have any term with x2 as a variable and that is the reason differentiation of this term will give, give me us 0. This is what we, re, we have written here. here. So if you observe here the other terms other terms lx1 3 lx2 3 similarly this term all of them will go to 0 because we do not have any any combination of say for some uh, uh, a into x1, x2 or some b into x2, x3 or some c into x1, x3. So, we do not have any com combination term in the present in L and that is the reason this Lx1, x2. So, the variables which are not repeated will give, give us the value of this particular is 0 and that is the reason we have got these values as 0 if you observe here. These are the zeros. Now, 
very simple now it's very simple to get the determinant of this fork or fourth matrix we have already discussed how to find out the determinant of the higher order uh, matrices so that is coming out to be 12 you can easily check that out similarly delta 3 is nothing but the determinant of only this much that is only this much matrix 0 1 1 1 minus 2 0 1 0 minus 2 and that is coming out to be 4 now if you observe here to maximize z is this and if you observe we will be putting the values of 5 3 2 that is what we got it as x0 as so it's x1 is 5 x2 is 3 x3 is 2 so we'll be getting the value of this z max is equals to 35 now how can we say that this is a z max one thing is they have already given us the the optimization function as maximization another way also we have done it we have done we have checked it with the delta 3 and delta 4 and therefore since the signs of delta 3 and delta 4 are alternative that is minus and plus therefore the extreme points x1 x2 x3 that is 5 3 2 is a local maximum point at this point the value of the objective function z equals to 35 and this is what we are we are, we are looking for z equals to 35 and this is what we have got it in the self observation slide also as the answer so this is all about the self observation slide of question number 1 as i have told you question number 2 would be the uh, self observation for this particular session please do solve and if you have any query write me in the comment section i am always happy to help you out happy learning thank you so much